So welcome to my little vodcast about how to make a vodcast. I'm going to show you a piece of software called ScreenFlow which I use to make all the vodcasts for my course C304 a couple of years ago. One of the things I discovered is that by using the software I could assemble a lecture segment or an entire lecture out of pieces and each of the pieces could be quite short so I wouldn't have to prepare and get correct first time a large 50 minute lecture but I could record perhaps 30 seconds or a minute um, or a slide in a particular series of slides and then assemble the thing afterwards. It took all the stress out of it. Well here is the piece of software it's called ScreenFlow and if I say I'd like a new recording then I get this little menu here. Uh, I can select some options before I start the recording. For example, I might want to include a talking head. So if I click this, you can see here I am. Uh, but we won't have me. And uh, we can record the audio from the built-in microphones. If I untick this, you'll find that I disappear completely and you can't hear me anymore. I think you can probably guess what I said. Uh, you can also click this to record directly from the computer's own audio, but we'll leave that unchecked. When I press this button, it's going to count me down and then it'll start to record the entire screen and everything that I say. So, well, without further ado, let's start my little vodcast recording. There we go. Well, welcome to my vodcast. My vodcast today is going to be about the problem of having web pages that are full of nonsense when you actually want to read a very nice article. One of the things that you'll discover these days is that many browsers come with a little button, in this case in Safari, a reader button, and if you press it, it'll remove all the horrible stuff from the web page and leave you with something that is a pleasure to read. This particular one is lovely because when you get to the end, if you've enjoyed it, you can print it. At least you won't do that if you're me because I'm paperless. And or you might want to email it to somebody as I often do. Um, and when you're fed up with it, you can quit it and go back to the page. Well, that's all I want to say on this part of this vodcast. Now actually I didn't mean to say that's all I want to say on this part of the vodcast in that vodcast. I wanted to say that now. I got a bit confused. But anyway, we can see how to get rid of that little mistake um, now. Now we're looking at the ScreenFlow software and what we can see are three panels. This is the screen that we've just recorded. Down here we have the audio and the screen recording shown as a timeline. And over here we have a panel that will allow us to um, do some post-production. Well, one thing I can do is just simply play. And I think you'll see that you'll recognize what we've got here. Okay, I'm going to stop talking now live. And what, when you hear my voice again, it'll be on the screen flow recording. Well, welcome to my vodcast. My vodcast today is going to be about the problem of having web pages that are full of nonsense when you actually want to read a very nice article. One of the things that you'll discover these days is that many browsers come with a little button, in this case in Safari, a reader button. Um, if you press it, it'll remove all the horrible stuff from the web page and leave you with something that is a pleasure to read. This particular one is lovely because when you get to the end, if you've enjoyed it, you can print it. At least you won't do that if you're me because I'm paperless. And or you might want to email it to somebody as I often do. Um, and when you're fed up with it, you can quit it and go back to the page. Well, that's all I want to say on this part of this vlogcast.
Okay, and there we have it at the end, and this is me now talking to you live. Right, we didn't like that bit at the end, so let's get rid of it. Down here, you'll see the scrubber. And if I go back to say there and play again with it, you can quit it and go back to the page. And I stop there because everything after that is not something I actually want. So I'll highlight both of these and go to edit and say trim end to scrubber, which means that everything to the right hand side of the scrubber will be removed. And away it goes. Now if I move the scrubber back, do. Um, and when you're fed up with it, you can quit it and go back to the page. And there we have a cleaned up version of my the first part of my little vodcast. Well I'm very happy with that now exactly as it um, as it as it's um, been done so I can go to my file I can say save and I will put it and I will call it p1 for part 1 and I'll put it in my documents folder and I'll save it and away we go okay now what I shall do is I shall now close that file and away it's gone okay now uh, when I decided I want to say a little bit more in my vodcast, maybe immediately, maybe a day later, maybe a month later, I can come back to it, I can start ScreenFlow again, and I can make a new recording. Leave all these things unchanged, and I will start my recording here. Of course, Sometimes you don't have time to read an article that you've just found on the internet, so this reader button um, isn't terribly useful. But the software that's behind the reader button is also available over here. And again, most browsers will allow you to install these buttons. These happen to be from a, a service called Readability, which is behind this reader button over here. And if I press that button, it's equivalent really to pressing the reader button. If I press that button there, it will save my document somewhere in the cloud. And I can go back to it later. Well, when I want to go back to it, what I have to do is to go to my readability website. This one belongs to me. And it's got all the things that I've saved, including the document which we were just looking at. And here it is. Robots at War. There it is. I've just saved it. I can go to this on the web. There are nice applications on my iPhone and my iPad. I can read it on there. and I can read it offline. So it's really very, very sweet. If I press the button, then from here I get the cleaned up version and I can read it at my leisure. Right, you see I've stopped the recording again and I've got my second slide, so let's listen to that. Of course, sometimes you don't have time to read an article that you've just found on the internet, so this reader button um, isn't terribly useful. But the software that's behind the reader button is also available over here, and again, most browsers will allow you to install these buttons. These happen to be from a, a service called Readability, which is behind this reader button over here. And if I press that button, it's equivalent really to pressing the reader button. If I press that button there, it will save my document somewhere in the cloud. And I can go back to it later. Well, when I want to go back to it, what I have to do is to go to my readability website. This one belongs to me, and it's got all the things that I've saved, including the document which we were just looking at. And here it is. Robots at War. There it is. I've just saved it. I can go to this on the web. There are nice applications on my iPhone and my iPad. I can read it on there. And I can read it offline. So it's really very, very sweet. If I press the button, then from here I get the cleaned up version and I can read it 
at my leisure. Well, that's excellent. You didn't make any mistakes. Perhaps I didn't like all of it, but it was um, good enough, I think. So what I will do now is to save that one. And I'm going to call this one P2 for part two. And there it is. And now I will close that one. Right, one last little bit of recording and then we'll stop. So, new recording and we'll go. One of the nice things about uh, readability is that when you've read something and you like it, you can uh, archive it, you can send it to your friends on Facebook, you can Twitter it, you can email it, you can send it to your Kindle, you can print it, you can do a number of different things. It's a really quite a nice service. It's called Readability. Just search for Readability in Google and you will find out everything there is to know about it. And for your browser, whether you use Internet Explorer or Chrome or Firefox or Safari as I do, then there are buttons like this that you can install that will enable you to clean up your reading and uh, read it at your leisure. Okay, so there's my third section and final section. And we won't listen to that one through. What we're going to do is to simply save that and call it P3. And I will now close that document. And I'm now going to get rid of that because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to go back to ScreenFlow and I'm going to create a empty document. And you see there is nothing here, there's nothing in the timeline and there is, um, well, we haven't really used this and in this vlogcast I'm not going to. Uh, I want to keep it as, as simple as possible. So what I'm going to do here is to um, is to open recent documents. First of all, I'll open P1, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that, and I'm going to highlight that, and I'm going to copy them, and then I'm going to close that document, and then I'm going to paste that into the document, and there we see it. Okay. Then I'm going to move the scrubber to the very end. And then I'm going to go back here. I'm going to open my second document, P2. I'm going to highlight the audio. I'm going to highlight the video. I'm going to copy those and close the document. And then paste it into the second document. And you see that the audio and the video have come directly afterwards. Then I'm going to move the scrubber to the very end and go back here and open P3. Again, I'm going to highlight the audio and the video. I'm going to copy them, close and paste. Now what we've got is one document which we will now save. And we'll simply call it P. It contains P1, P2 and P3. If we put the scrubber, for example, just here and play, you'll see the end of my first section goes straight into the second. Do. Um, and when you're fed up with it, you can quit it and go back to the page. Of course, sometimes you don't have time to read an article. And you see, it was extremely smooth. So there are some other things that I could do, such as putting transitions between these sections, as you may have seen if you watched my vodcast from C304. And I could do some post-production over here. Again, you may have seen me highlighting and magnifying parts of the screen in my vodcast as well. Uh, but I think that's a step too far today. Right, I think I've finished my vodcast. Thank you very much for watching.